Hello everyone. Today we will be going over the benefits using CBD over diclofenac for rheumatoid arthritis on individuals over 65. Before we begin, I want to go over some background information regarding CBD and the disease state rheumatoid arthritis. Let's start with CBD. So what is CBD? Where does it come from? Its mode of action. CBD is a non-psychoactive chemical from the cannabis plant. It is usually derived from marijuana or hemp and does not contain tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC. It attenuates pro-inflammatory immune response and is used for many other purposes besides rheumatoid arthritis, such as treating pain, lowering anxiety, and stimulating appetite. There are various ongoing trials discussing the use of CBD and its mode of action. The effects are unclear for anti-inflammatory action as the research results have varied. In a recent in vitro study, it has shown that CBD promotes chondrocyte and synovial site apoptosis, but with a stronger effect on inflammatory activated cells. And the positive result is an anti antherotic activity. But while this may seem confusing when you just read on a slide, let's see this in a diagram. As I mentioned earlier, this again is a proposed theory since results are unclear. Let's start off at the blue arrow and then continue on following the black arrows. TNF increases TRPA1 protein, which is located in the intracellular compartment. CBD activates CRPA1 and calcium is released into the cytosol. Elevations in cytosolic calcium are reduced through uptake into the mitochondria. By binding to the VDAC1, CBD increases calcium 2 flux through the outer mitochondrial membrane. Calcium is then taken up into the matrix by the mitochondrial calcium uniporter, and the mitochondria are depolarized by the sodium calcium exchanger, which operates in reverse mode under these conditions. Calcium overload occurs, the mitochondrial permeability transition pore, or the MPTP assembles, and cell death occurs. While the previous slide mostly discussed about the apoptosis factor, this slide talks about the anti-inflammatory effect that CBD does cause. As mentioned, no one fully understands the mechanism of CBD. From another clinical trial performed on mice, it was discovered that CBD-treated mice shown diminished proliferation, IFN gamma production, and TNF by synovial cells in terms of arthritis. Each one of these cytokines are pro-inflammatory, so reducing them will lead to an, an loss of an inflammatory response. Please note that the mice were ingesting CBD orally. Again, little human data is presented to see the mode of action fully. Now let's discuss what is rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition where the immune system is attacking healthy body cells. Specifically, antibodies attack the tissues lining the joints known as synovial cells. This causes the cells to divide and contribute to inflammation. This cause also causes chemicals to be released that damage bone cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. This leads to the characterized swollen joints that are painful and impact physical function and quality of life of those who suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. Going into a specific patient demographic, why should we use CBD for people over 65? The rest of the slides that will go further through some benefits and risk in more detail. Here is just an overview of the benefits and risk of use of CBD on people over 65. So one of the top benefits is it doesn't produce a high such that there is no THC in the content. It can also provide multiple other health benefits that elders might have, such as reducing chronic pain. You also do not need a prescription to get CBD, and there are multiple products available that will soon be discussed as the presentation continues. Overall, it is well tolerated, has no crazy adverse effects, and is generally safe. But there are possible risks in using CBD on people over 65. This includes interactions with conditions such as cardiovascular conditions that people might have when they are over 65, or things such as drugs, such as citalopram or warfarin, since those over 65 tend to have use of many different medications. Again, there's insufficient evidence to rate effectiveness as of today. CBD has many anti-inflammatory properties, which will help to decrease the swelling in the areas of the rheumatoid arthritis. And there are also pain relieving properties to CBD, which will decrease the arthritis pain the patient is experiencing. 
And although CBD is not a permanent fix um, to the arthritis, it can manage the symptoms very well. Um, so it allows for kind of like the swelling and like the current symptoms to be um, alleviated. So there are many different CBD dosage forms, um, such as oils, tinctures, creams, lotions, capsules, tablets, and even edibles. Um, this allows for versatility and gives a lot of the elderly many different options um, with the ways that they want to take the CBD. Um, and CBD does also allow for therapeutic effects without psychoactive repercussions of THC. Um, and this is actually very ben beneficial, especially for the elderly, because they are looking for the therapeutic effects um, without psychoactive effects. As far as toxicity and safety, there is no established clinical guidelines on the dosing of CBD. Um, it is recommended that you start at a low dose and you slowly increase until you find a dose that relieves the symptoms and works for you individually. Um, you can always take more, you obviously cannot take less, um, and there's little to no potential for overdose on CBD, and CBD is safe to use within reason and it has very few drug interactions, so this makes for a relatively safe um, treatment for arthritis. As far as drug interactions, like I said that they were um, very little to none. So there are some minor possible drug interactions, which um, the use of CBD can decrease the speed of how the body breaks down certain drugs, such as caffeine, carbamazepine, citalopram, and lithium. Um, and it is suggested that consulting with a physician before starting the use of CBD is recommended and it's very beneficial. What is diclofenac? Diclofenac is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. It has acetic acid residues, it's anti-rheumatic, it has analgesic properties, and it inhibits the COX-1 and 2 enzymes to decrease production of pro-inflammatory prostaglandins. There are several dosage forms of diclofenac. The first is an ophthalmic solution and this is mostly used in patients who are recovering from cataract surgery, so this is not very applicable to arthritis, but um, a more commonly used is the systemic diclofenac, which comes in an oral tablet, oral packet, um, a delayed release oral tablet, or an extended release. There's also topical diclofenac, and this is very common for arthritis. Patients can apply this to areas of pain or inflammation. There's a cream form, a gel form. There's different kits you can get, um, different patches like the 24-hour patch solution, and then a therapy pack. This slide just shows some dosage forms of diclofenac that you might commonly see in practice. So there's the topical gel, that's 1%, 50 milligram tablets, um, and then the patches that are 140 milligrams. The labeled indications for diclofenac, the first one is osteoarthritis pain. This is FDA approved in adults. The evidence favors efficacy and the recommendation is only in some cases, but it's a category B recommendation. And then the second indication is pain, acute, mild, and moderate. It's FDA approved for adults. Um, evidence favors efficacy. And again, um, recommendation is category B. Category B evidence basically means that there's fair evidence to support the recommendation. There are some boxed warnings for a diclofenac. The first is 
serious cardiovascular thrombotic events. So non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs cause an increase risk of serious cardiovascular thrombotic events, including myocardial infarction and stroke, which can be fatal. This risk may occur early in treatment and may increase with duration of use. Diclofenac is contraindicated in the setting of coronary artery bypass graft surgery. So um, diclofenac can also cause GI bleeding, ulceration, and perforation, and said um, cause an increased risk of these GI adverse reactions. And these reactions can occur at any time during use and without warning. Elderly patients and patients with a prior history of peptic ulcer disease and or GI bleeding are at greater risk for these events. Beer's criteria are guidelines for healthcare professionals to help improve the safety of prescribing medications for older adults 65 years and above. Um, some of the criteria for diclofenac are to avoid use in elderly patients unless other alternatives are not effective and patient can take gastroprotective agent like a proton pump inhibitor. Um, be cautious of diclofenac, again, because of the gastrointestinal bleeding. And use cautiously in older adults with asymptomatic heart failure. And then avoid use in elderly patients with stage 4 or 5 chronic kidney disease due to increased risk of kidney injury. Some more criteria are the increased risk of reinfarction or cardiovascular related death. Mortality has been reported in patients receiving NSAID following recent myocardial infarctions. Avoid use with other NSAIDs. And then some precautions are that it's been seen that diclofenac can be present in breast milk following oral administration. It is unknown if diclofenac can be detected in breast milk following topical application, but this should be considered when prescribing this to um, females of childbearing age. There are many drug interactions, a few of which are alcohol, angiotensin II receptor blockers, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, anticoagulants, and beta blockers. So it should be avoided or used with caution if taking diclofenac with any of these. And then availability in the U.S. Prescription and over-the-counter products are available for diclofenac. Pricing can be high depending on the product and it is available throughout the U.S. Portion of the PowerPoint will be discussing why to use CBD instead of diclofenac in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. One of the benefits of taking CBD instead of diclofenac to treat rheumatoid arthritis is that CBD has usually well tolerated to no side effects. Diclofenac, on the other hand, has numerous negative side effects. One of them includes serious GI bleeding, ulceration in the stomach or intestine, and even colon perforation. A patient taking diclofenac also has increased risk in cardiovascular death especially after the consumption of NSAIDs following a recent myocardial infraction. Diclofenac also interacts with a lot of common drugs, including but not limited to alcohol, beta blockers, and anticoagulants. Another benefit to CBD is that it will not give the patient a high, but instead the patient will feel a slight calmness and relaxing sensation, along with anti-inflammatory properties and a decrease in pain. Seeing as there are numerous dosage forms of both CBD and diclofenac, prices can range. 
At local pharmacy chains, CBD can range from $0.04 cents to $0.20 cents per milligram. More reputable brand tinctures can be purchased through a website or dispensary and tend to cost on the higher side. It is important to make sure that the CBD one is purchasing is confirmed to be free of contaminants and has the ingredients claimed on the label. In most states, the purchase of legal CBD is quite simple, seeing as it can be purchased at a local dispensary, pharmacy, natural product store, or even online. Unfortunately, there are some states that consider the purchase of CBD to be conditionally legal, so it might be more difficult to purchase CBD in these states, including Connecticut, Florida, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, and other states as well. It is important to note that a patient no longer needs to be prescribed diclofenac by a doctor to purchase it. At the time when it was only available via prescription, it used to cost at an average retail price of $67.51. Ever since the legalization of over-the-counter diclofenac in 2020, it can be purchased at a local pharmacy for about $10 to $30, depending on the brand, dosage form, and dosing itself. We're going to wrap up this presentation by talking about the overall benefits of using CBD to treat rheumatoid arthritis over diclofenac that we explained throughout this presentation. First of all, CBD does not produce a high, contrary to popular belief. Second, it provides multiple health benefits, including anti-inflammatory to decrease swelling and to decrease pain. Third, a prescription is not needed to purchase CBD of any kind. Four, CBD oil is usually well tolerated in many patients of various ages. Five, there is numerous dosage forms available, including tinctures.